Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play Life is Strange. When we left off last time, we went into Nathan's room. We've got his phone, so we need to check that out, see what we can find there. We also went and talked to Frank. He gave us some information, so we've got some leads Chloe, to work on. are you okay? I'm glad things worked out okay with Frank. Me too. It's nice to have one less enemy in Arcadia Bay. Amen to that. Yeah, that was a pretty dicey conversation. Initially, it worked out that Chloe ended up shooting both his dog and him, and it was horrible. Focus on this board and start tying these clues together. But at least we were able to fix things, and now he just sent me a message. Hi, Max. Just thought I'd wish you and Chloe good luck for your search, with what little luck I have left. Thanks, Frank. The bigger our team, the more luck we have. I see why Chloe digs you. Stop by later if you both want a party, and good luck. Wow, yeah, he's totally on board now. So we've won him to our side, which is pretty awesome that he's not an enemy. Now, I don't know how this figures into the money that Chloe owes him. I imagine he probably still wants his money, but it's something. Well, let's go ahead and look at here. Oh, the picture of the whale, the squirrel. So there's still a bunch I'm missing. Some kind of bird's nest, stack of rocks, footprints. Yeah, I'm kind of sucking at taking all the pictures, huh? All right, what have we got here that's new? It's, it's got a star, like, oh, hey, there's more, more, be more information on Frank. Okay. Um, no, nothing really new there. Yeah, I don't know who that the star is. Oh, no, no. Is the star on this, or is the star on... It's here. I still don't know why Chloe or even Rachel would want to hang out with Frank, but I can't suss that out anymore. Maybe if I hadn't left town, I'd be less judgmental. But now we have Nathan's phone, David's coordinates, Frank's account book, and a big board of clues, which brings us closer to finding Rachel Amber. Finally. So maybe the tide is finally turning. Or time is finally turning. Exciting. Yes, we need to put these all together. Alright, so... Let's see... All right. How far did we think we were at here? So we visited Kate. That was good. And then on to Nathan Prescott. So after getting the inside info and assist from the other members of our team, Chloe and I made our way to the boys' dorm, a.k.a. Nathan's lair. Chloe stood guard outside in the hall, and I stealthed my way into Nathan's room. And even though I've become a master spying detective, I still get surprised by things I see or find, like Nathan's sleek, expressionist bro cave. It was like walking from light to shadow in a single step. I swear I could feel the temperature drop the second I walked in. But then Nathan knows photography, and he knows you have to keep the film and equipment chilled. I store my instant film hoard in Mr. Jefferson's classroom. Speaking of cold stuff, Nathan's room was layered in creepy shit. The disturbing but impressive photos, all the evidence from his father's bullying, and probably the most important clue we could ever find. Nathan's phone, likely loaded with messages and mysteries. It's not a good thing that I've internalized spying and stealing so casually over the past week. Everyday hero, am I right? And that's when Nathan Prescott showed up. He looked so wild-eyed and out of control that I felt a twinge of sympathy that he clearly needed help. And he does. I'm not denying that. He does. And I, I think I think he has an untreated mental disorder. His father makes things worse. His father's very controlling over and bullying over him. I, I don't doubt that his family life is pretty crappy. But he's a danger. He's a danger to everyone around him, and it's not being addressed. We saw all the stuff on his student record that has basically been expunged. That they keep trying to hide up and cover for him. He's got a gun on campus. He's pulled it twice on people. He's He beat up Warren. He's He's been preying on girls at the party. Like I know that he, he needs help. He's mentally unwell, but he's hurting people too. So... Still totally, so yeah, he did need help, but then I remembered he was also an asshole and been extremely dangerous to me, Chloe, and Kate. So before I had to rewind, Warren entered the scene and my white knight headbutted Nathan in perfect payback. I couldn't believe it. Neither could Nathan. In fact, Warren literally did go ape all over Nathan's face. It wasn't cool, but my nerves were so frayed from the week, and I was so over all the Blackwell bullies that I didn't try to stop Warren from beating Nathan into submission. Warren had his own issues to work out with on Nathan. 
well, you know, fair. And maybe at the least, if Nathan's not going to get the help that he actually needs, if he's not going to see, if his parents aren't going to take him to see a therapist or take him out of the Blackwell situation or anything else, at the very least, maybe knowing that people will fight back against his bullying will make him a little more wary of hurting people. Hopefully. After that dorm brawl, Chloe and I headed to the beach to deal with Frank and see if we could get him to join us. I had to be careful and not get him all tweaked out. He was pretty pissed that someone had gotten into his RV and borrowed his account book, but once he saw that we didn't care about drugs or money, only Rachel, he mellowed out. All I could think was, I'm trying to get a drug dealer to help me find a missing girl. Incredibly, Frank actually agreed to help. He knows how naive and clueless we are, so I hope that our sincerity swayed him. I'm still unsure about him, and I can't be na so naive not to keep my rewind guard up. I don't know much about him, except that he sells drugs, has a wicked temper, and that he loved Rachel, even more than his beans. So we get to add another member to our team. Booyah! My life feels so surreal at this point. I don't know how to react anymore. I can rewind time and space, but is it aging me before my own time and space? Am I learning things I shouldn't? Messing up too much shit? Including my own history? Obviously my nosebleeds and dizzy spells are a bad sign that I'm overusing my powers, but it's become almost part of my nature. Or maybe I have it. Power corrupts? Not yet, I hope. I remember this famous episode of the original Star Trek, where Kirk has to go back in time and let the person he loves die so the Nazis won't win the war. What kind of fucked up choice is that? What would have happened if I had not been in the school bathroom to save Chloe that day? But damn it, I was there, and thus I was supposed to be there. Destiny. And the fact that we were able to convince Frank to actually help us gives the most hope I've had in a while. Yes, Chloe and I were stupid to confront Frank like that, considering how he reacted before, but I don't see how anyone could say he didn't really love Rachel Amber. He shouldn't have pulled a knife on Chloe, though, and I don't like that he sells all these dangerous meds to teenagers, especially Nathan. He needs psychiatric supervision, not just baggies of pills. At least you won't be going to Frank again. All right, so we are caught up. Let's look around the room. There's that gun. Sorry, we got Frank on our side without using you. Yeah, we need to sneak that back to David Madsen. We really, really do. Or no. That's not David's gun. This is the gun we took from Nathan now. Always, ugh, all these guns floating around. Chloe's on a roll to find more clues about Rachel now that we're so close. Let's try talking to Chloe before we look at the Hey, door. Max, see if you can put together all those Rubik's clues. Just holla if you need any info while I go online to make sure we haven't missed anything. All right, all right. What you looking at? We've printed everything we need. Now it's time to focus on the big board. Snap all these pieces together. I will, I will. I'm Roger just looking that. around your room first. I'm going to study the board and try to connect all these dots. All right, let's get to it. So, starting with down at the bottom. I think that's Nathan's clues. Gather info on a character by selecting all the correct clues. For each section, there is a specific number of clues to select. I have to analyze Nathan's messages. What could help me unlock this phone? Okay. Uh, let's look at his creepy drawing. If there is a dark room, we better find it. Yeah. It's a good thing Chloe slipped all these files on her flash drive. Here it is. <sighs> There's a lot of numbers in here. Home phone, cell phone, work phone, email address. Hmm. Got a birth date, August 29th, 1995. That could be important. What's this, a Vortex Club flyer? This is the Vortex Club party where Nathan drugged Kate. October Did he do 4th. the same thing to Rachel at another party? Holy shit. Nathan is seriously unhinged. But those numbers might be useful. They do seem probably pretty good. Uh, what do we got here? Couldn't hurt to give this pin code a whack. Hmm. One, 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 one. Make sure to change it. All right. What's this paper? Oh, so busted. It's good to see the Prescotts can't cover up all their tracks. 
Dear Mr. and Mrs. Prescott, we regret to inform you that Nathan Prescott has disrupted various classes over the past month despite repeated warnings and leniency. Due to a crude outburst in Mrs. Hoyda's intro to literature class on Tuesday, September 20th, Nathan was sent back to his dormitory for the day without a proper write-up for his files. Yeah, we, we looked at this one before. It was the one about um, his erratic behavior pa patterns may need supervision beyond Blackwell's ability. And then his dad was like, no, he's staying at Blackwell. And Blackwell caved. Oh, there has got to be some good shit in his phone. I just need the code to unlock it. Okay. Well, phone. Uh, this paper seems pretty good. Maybe something about the dark room and the student file. Let's try that. Damn. I, I must have missed something. Okay. SIM card? Better look for any clues or numbers that could be his pen code. Okay. So maybe take this off. Okay, Max. There we go. Let's blow this code up and go home. All right. So let's keep up on that. Let's start hacking. Okay, unlock it. Oh, it's gonna make me enter. Okay, what do we think the number is? Nine five three five. Let's try it. Oops, bad code. Hmm. All right. What else have we got? So it's a four digit code. One, one, one. It can't be one, 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 one. That's terrible. What are all of these numbers this guy's got on here? 3988? 0058? Do I have only a certain amount of tries? 00. Oh, yeah, I knew it wouldn't be that easy. Okay, it's not going to be all ones, but whatever. You locked it, dumbass. <gasps> I did? Enter P-U-K. Okay, well, we got that. Eight, seven. Okay, 87, 89, 78, 8. 87, 89. 89, 8. Crap, what was it? Five, I can't hold numbers that well in my head. I should have a paper next to me. Oh, wrong code. Fuck you. And you made me say that. Oh, goodness. Okay, we gotta look at it again. 87, 89, 78, 8. Let's find out what Nathan Prescott has been trying to hide. Okay. What up? Need the G. Okay. Cool. Bitch, you sold me water, asshole. Calm down. Bring it to me. Bringing it. Stay away. Pigs on the beach. Okay, so that must be messages to Frank, I'm guessing? Yes. Uh, this is all about Nathan trying to score for the Vortex Club party. You home? Got to party tonight. Home. On the way. Load the bowl. Nathan was jonesing hard the night of the party. He didn't have enough drugs. Hey, I need to score ASAP. I don't make house calls. You have a car. No time. Charge me double. Damn right. Have cash on you. No fucking around. Give me the address. I'll call to give you the exact directions. In transit. Get that money out. Drug dealer drama. You up, bro? No shit. What you need? Peruvian flake skidoo acid. You're paying night prices. Don't make me wait. Sorry for being a dick. Need more stuff. You home? Yes, don't come. Fuck off. Mm. Okay, so then, yeah, this was the 4th, and then that was on the 7th. Nathan, you're out of control. Hey, need weed, etc. Now. Calm yourself. You speaking? Soon. Hook a brother up, please. Meet Beach. Be cool this time. So it was you. Now I can officially call you a psycho stalker. Well, keep your smart mouth shut about everything, or I'm coming for your ass. I know where you sleep. Yeah. 
Yeah, we figured no, it was him. Nathan, it's time for you to watch out. Yeah. Hey, whore, Asshole. feminazis will be exterminated. Watch out. Is this from Nathan's father? That's brutal. Please do not contact me at work. I've told you this before, and being high is not an excuse anymore. This is a business, not just a hobby. You want to, you want me to treat you like an adult who can get things done on his own? Impress me. I'd like nothing more than to be proud of you. I'm not there yet. Ooh, that's harsh. But what did we really gain from that? That was not as relevatory as I was hoping it would be. So, what's this little sideboard over here? All right. Let's look at Frank's info. Let's look at Frank's drug deals during the week of the party. Okay. So, only two things we really need here, although we're going to look at all of it. So, here's the picture. So weird how close they were. But Frank couldn't keep Rachel or protect her. All right. What's this? There's no doubt she loved him in some way. Oh, yeah. That was that letter that she wrote. A lot of weird shit going on in her life. Sometimes feels like she's never going to get out of Arcadia Bay. That's not going to be it. Another picture. Maybe Rachel took a road trip with Frank, but she did come back. So the account book really is the new thing, but what else do we Frank got? Frank is for sure the local dealer, but I, I doubt Rachel was carrying drugs for him. David Madsen and Nathan Prescott right. have both come to my office to warn me that Rachel Amber has been a drug mule in Mr. Madsen's talk radio terminology, acting as a front for another local dealer. Considering Rachel's exemplary status, I told David that I would need more concrete proof, and he promised he had more to show. So, what happened to Rachel after this? She dumped Frank, but I don't think he would hurt her. Okay, we read that before. I remember that one. Rot must stand for Rottweiler. That does fit Nathan. Rotten. Uh, Chihuahua is Katie. Bobtail and his fancy car. Sheba and Nacho. Husky Joseph. Greyhound Nick. Docks and Stella. Golden Simon. Labrador Logan. German Chef Steve. Rot Nathan. Boxer Stifler Beagle. Justin Bulldog. Chloe, Chloe's a Bulldog. Yorkshire Bruce. Pug Johnny. Chow Nicholas. Poodle Glenn. And Tonk is a Wolf. Okay, so this account book. Oop, not select. Look. Hmm, Frank's account something? book. But the client names are encrypted. Oh, well. Da, 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 da. This one. What? No. There. Select. Yes! There you the go. The game is on. Now, talk to us, account book. Tell us everything. What do we got here? Let's see if I can find any deal Frank made with Nathan or the Vortex Club. All right, starting here. Okay, Max, remember these names and see how Nathan fits in with all this. I, I gotta remember all these ridiculous names. Okay, I guess the key thing is Rot. We need that. And then possibly Bulldog. I don't know who Nacho and Tonk are. All right. Frank sure is keeping his customers satisfied. He could open a store. Oh, Bulldog, there's our Chloe. Right, on September 30th. Everybody in Arcadia Bay must be high. That explains a lot. Okay, these are the first, second, we need the fourth, that's what we're really after here. If Frank applied this kind of detail to his life, who am I to talk? All right, we'll go in a circle, this one. I wonder what dog name Frank would have given me. Okay, so there's... Rock got some cocaine. Rock got two sheets of skidoo acid. And then Rock got two grams of molly plus quarter pound wheat. So that might be important because it's showing that he's I'm buying a whole lot more from you. just reading this. Stray dog one. <laughs> 
Straight dog two. Okay, so those are ones that aren't regular enough to have their own special code, eh? Hmm. Two deals with Nathan on the same day? Party supplies, no doubt. Okay, so I think maybe this one we want. And this one. Oh, and one more. Uh, mm -hmm. What else has a lot of rot on it? Or actually, what's well, got Chihuahua? Because that's Katie. Kate, right? So, yeah, there's a Chihuahua there. That might be important. This is like goddamn math. Nope. I suck. Okay. Hmm? If Nathan did drug Kate, he must have gotten the drugs from Frank. Oh, no. Not working. This is not working. Oh, yes. There we go. These are all the times and places for Frank and Nathan's deals. Uh, that's it, Max. Persistence gets us there. Kind of embarrassing that reasoning didn't, but hey, still works. All right, David's clues. Thanks to David's own investigation, I should be able to find out what Nathan did during the party's week. Okay. David should have done way more than take photos of Kate. Yeah. Maybe he was trying to help Kate in his own messed up way. I think he was. All right, that's one we looked at before. Does David know what's going on with Rachel, or is he just paranoid about everybody? Rachel's been cutting class all week. Frank and Rachel meet once again. Rachel avoids her dormitory. Followed Rachel to Lighthouse. Rachel avoids her dormitory. Followed Rachel to Lighthouse. And a police report. Where she was picked up at 235 Blackwell Academy for possession of a controlled substance. Reported by David Madsen, head of campus security, witnessed her trying to hide or secure a suspicious medical bag. Officer was called into question in his amber who responded with threats and denials. Her bag was found to contain various illegal pharmaceuticals. Of course. I'm a suspect. <laughs> Proving David sucks as a detective. Sorry. I wouldn't say sucks. He's probably come up with David something useful. David really has been on Rachel's ass for a while. She should have been upset. I was surprised to get an unscheduled visit from Rachel Amber. She seemed quite upset and claimed that David Madsen was following her and taking photographs. Okay. Yeah, that's familiar. We saw that. At least David was finally going after the right suspect. Okay, this we saw. You need to get man. rid of these damn cameras, David. Look at all these license plates. I hope he was tailing Nathan. I hope in this case that David has good tracking skills. Okay, so that will need possibly some... Let's, let's look at these coordinates again. Okay, it's just a bunch of latitudes and... Oh, no! Twin Peaks. And then... Do we think it's a license plate? Maybe. And what, the map? Looks like this isn't the right combination. What do we got here? Is there a license plate there? No... Looks like David was tracking somebody's car. Maybe even Nathan's. Good clue. Okay. So, what else is about a car here? Is there a car in this one? Yeah. And that's all she wrote. <sighs> Please let me find some clues about Nathan in here. All right. What, Nathan? Whoa. Get ready to fucking die, bitches. You fuck up my dorm door, I kill your scholarship. Nice spelling. Uh, it was too much to hope that the beating would th make him think twice about messing with people. Now he's just going in full psycho mode. All right. Great. 
Now, how do I find out which car is Nathan's to match the coordinates? Okay, let's look at all these. Why the hell are you following these people? And to where? So, Twilight Zone. Okay, let's find out whose car this is. Sex offender? I don't know, that's probably not what it meant to, is meant to be. Um, no, don't select. Look. I don't know what that's meant to be. Yep, another car David was tracking. Okay, so those are the cars. Let's see what we got here. Of course Nathan drives an SUV. Overcompensating, as usual. That's considered an SUV? I thought that's just a pickup truck with extended cab. That's not the same thing as an SUV. There's Nathan dealing to the kids right out in the open. Hmm. Who does this car belong to? Oh, that's, that's Nathan, isn't it? Yeah, the light on the back is taped up, so that's the one. So, yeah, this, along with the S, which is this one? Yes. Okay, and what else do we want? That's definitely Chloe's car. Interesting. Is this Nathan's car? No. Unless he's switching his lights and... No, Twilight Sense seems like it's probably Warren. Wow, sir. This looks like an expensive machine. Maybe that's Nathan's dad, that one there. Um, but no, if we're just looking for Nathan, then... Looks like this is not relevant at all. Some of it is. That's Nathan's car. Oh, this is what I need. The The picture that confirms Nathan's car. Oh, there yes. we go. Now we're finally getting somewhere. Chloe, let's plug in these numbers and see if they lead to an actual address. Aye, aye, Captain. Here we come, Rachel. So what did we learn, ladies? Take a breath, Max. Go through all this data and you can find out where Nathan took Kate after the party. Okay. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff to look through. Um, where are all these pictures? Was Frank meeting Nathan at the junkyard? That beach is like Frank's main office. Okay. I know Nathan wasn't looking for Bigfoot in the forest. Somebody is stocking up on gas. Why? And these all have dates that I should no be taking note as Nathan well. No doubt stays in his dorm room. So he could be hiding clues there too. We were just in his dorm room. Not much out there. Is that the dark room? The barn? Oh, that has to be the Prescott estate. Poor, rich Nathan. If Joyce knew what Nathan did to Chloe, she would fry his ass. Okay, what have we got up here? Let's look at all these little papers. Oh, these are our, all of our rot ones, huh? On dates, so... Let's find... There's the fourth. Blackwell. But I don't think we want him at Blackwell. It was at 540. 7th on the beach. 7th on the beach. What's this? 7th on the beach again. 4th, Boondocks. That's going to be the one. So, this infamous party was the 4th. Yep. Now then... What do we have on the 4th? That's the key thing. This is the 4th. I don't make house calls. No time charge me double. And he'll give exact directions. Oh no, not read. Select. That's a key one. And then we'll match that up with whatever's the 4th down here. I'm guessing perhaps this barn? Yeah, 1056. That sounds... Oh, that seems promising. Yeah. Chloe, 
This is definitely the place. Let me dig up some more clothes here. Nope. Nothing, Max. There's nothing here. Just some shitty old barn. Well, let's go look at the barn. Let's keep searching and find out who owns this haunted barn. I'm on this. Hold on. Somebody named Harry Aaron Prescott. Prescott, there you go. I'm shocked. Should we call the police? Fuck that. Go to you the know barn. The police here are like Nathan's private security, right? Ladies, we gotta so go to the barn. Up. As you've noticed, this what if whole Rachel's town there? is messed up. We can't trust anybody except each other. So we have to go out to that farmhouse by ourselves. Yes, right now. I was afraid you'd say that. We could call Warren since he kicked Nathan's ass. It's just the two of us, nobody else. And I'm not scared at all. You have the power. Unless it fails me. I feel like we're this close to finding Rachel. We have to find her, Max. We will. But remember... My power isn't infinite. We still have to be careful. Do you hear, Chloe? Yes, sir. Hmm. And I'm noticing that we left our computer open. That's kind of showing where we're going. I'm hoping this is actually a good thing. I'm hoping that David Madsen will see, and maybe he'll come and check it out too, because I'm still feeling he's a good guy. So this is a situation where we may find ourselves wanting some backup. And with any luck, he'll be there to help us. So we'll see how that plays out. But I'm going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. So please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back next time. I am really super excited to see what is in this barn.